In this lesson, we're going to learn that if you see a product in a special form, you can usually learn to expand it very, very quickly. So we're going to be talking about some special bracket expansions. Unfortunately, there's this really prevalent way that many people learn to do maths around the world. A lot of people have this misconception that maths is all about learning formulas and learning how to apply them, but that couldn't be further from the truth. In reality, formulas are just shortcuts. They allow you to skip a whole bunch of steps because you know the answer already. So in general, you can always derive every single formula you're ever given because they're just hiding a bunch of steps from you. And I'm gonna demonstrate that with two special expansions. Now I'm assuming that you already roughly know how to expand two brackets. If not, I've already covered this in a previous video and you should definitely check that out before you continue with this lesson. But if you do know how to expand brackets, I'm gonna introduce this idea of a formula with a particular example. Now I've given you a pretty simple problem here. I'd just like to know the value of 34 squared. Now of course, one thing we could always do is just type it into a calculator, but I think that misses the whole spirit of the game. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break up 34 into 30 plus four. After this, we can see that 30 plus four squared is the exact same thing as 30 plus four times 30 plus four. Just the same thing that say three squared is the same thing as three times three. Okay, so at this point, this should bring back some memories. To multiply 30 plus four by 30 plus four, we should draw a square where each side is equal to 34. Now 34 squared is just 34 times 34, so it's a 34 square. But in this case, we can also see that 30 plus four is also the same thing as 34. So we can actually chop this down here. Here we have 30, and then over here we have the extra four. After this, we can then chop it this way too. Here we have another 30, and then here we have the last four. Now, I can't actually calculate 34 squared in my head, and I don't think too many of you watching this can do that either. But I can actually calculate 30 squared in my head, because that's just gonna be the same thing as three squared, and then I'm gonna need to add two zeros. So three squared is nine, and then I'm gonna need to add two zeros. So this whole area is 900. But if I wanted to, I could also rewrite 900 as 30 squared because this is a 30 square. Now after this, I want you to notice that this area over here is exactly the same as this area over here. Both of them are equal to 30 times four. Now 30 times four is the exact same thing as 120 because four times three is 12 and then I add the zero. So I've got 120 in this area here. Now another way we could include these two boxes is we could say that we have 30 times four, but then we have two of them. So we could say it's 30 times four times two. And then finally, we're left with this little square over here. The width and height of this square are both gonna be four, and four times four is 16. So we can fit 16 blocks in this square over here. But again, I'm gonna to prefer to write this as four squared instead of 16. So I'm gonna add four squared over here. Now, if I'm being totally honest with you, I don't actually care what the value of 34 squared is. I just wanted to show you that we can rewrite this like this, because that's gonna be the important part moving forward. But just for completeness' sake, we have 900 here, and then we add 120, so then we have 1,020. If we add another 120, then we have 1,140, and if we add 16, we have 1,156. Now, it's pretty cool that you can always use this to basically square any number you like, but again, you could use a calculator for that. The more interesting thing, however, is that you can rewrite anything in this form like this. You take the first number, you square it, then you take the second number, and then you square it. And then you can multiply the two inner numbers by the number two, and then add that on. And then we'll see this continues to work, even if this number is not 30, and this number is not four. So let me just go ahead and draw the general case on the left. So if we wanted to expand anything in the form a plus b all squared, we could rewrite it in this form over here because you can see that 30 is kind of like the a and four is kind of like the b. But instead, I'm just gonna go ahead and break it up into an a and into a b. Now, as you can see, this shape over here is exactly the same as the shape that we had up here. The only difference is that a and b can be absolutely any length you like. So if that's the case, then we can break up a plus b all squared into these four areas over here. 
Now, this first area over here has a height of a and then a width of a. So that means it's equal to a squared. Next, we can look at these two areas over here, remembering that we have two of them, as we said before. The height of this area is a, and then the width of this area is b. So in this case, you have two groups of a times b. After this, we have this final area over here. Its height is b, and then its width is b. So that means it's equal to b squared. Now, just like we did in this case over here, we just need to add up all four of the areas. So in this case, we can see that a plus b all squared is going to be the exact same thing as a squared plus two groups of a b plus one group of b squared. So just to be totally clear, anytime you see anything in the form of a plus b all squared, you can always replace it for a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, because those two things are equivalent. On the other hand, if you see anything in this form on the right, if it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, you can always replace it for the form on the left. You just do whatever's most convenient for you for the problem that you're trying to solve. Now from this perfect square expansion, we can actually get another perfect square expansion. What would happen if this b over here was actually a negative number? So to show this, I'm going to replace every instance of b for a negative b. So this is going to become negative b, and this is also going to become negative b. Now in this case, we can say that plus minus b is the same thing as negative b. So this just becomes a minus b all squared. Of course, 2 times a times minus b is the same thing as minus 2ab. So we can just replace this for a minus and get rid of the minus inside this bracket. And then finally, if you try to square a negative number, it just turns into a positive number. Like negative 3 squared is just negative 3 times negative 3, which is just 9. The negative just goes away. So we can rewrite this part as b squared. So just like that, we have another useful formula. If you have a minus b all squared, that's the same thing as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. I want you to notice that if this sign over here is positive, then the first sign is going to be positive and the second one's going to be positive. If this sign is negative, however, then you copy a negative first, but the second sign is always positive. Now you don't really have to write it in this order. Of course you could count these up in any order you liked. But this is the customary order that you usually see in most textbooks and most resources. So I guess we just need to learn how to use it. So let me get rid of this example we had on the right, and then I'll give you a harder problem, and you can solve it using this formula. So I'm asking you to expand 3x minus 2x squared all squared. Of course you're going to use this form over here because this is a negative sign. This 3x over here is going to be your a, and this 2x squared is going to be your b. So the formula is pretty straightforward here. It just tells you to square this a, then we just put a negative sign on, then we just have to multiply a and b by the number 2, as you can see over here. And then finally, the formula tells us to just square the b. So we're just going to square 2x squared. Now we've applied the formula correctly, but all we need to do to finish off is to just simplify things. So 3x all squared is just going to be the same thing as 9 times x squared. Next, we just simplify the second term over here. We notice that 2 times 3 is the same thing as 6, and then 6 times 2 is the same thing as 12. Then after that, we can multiply x by x squared to get x cubed. So we just get 12x cubed. Now finally, we just have this last term to deal with. Well, 2 squared is the same thing as 4, and then x squared all squared is the same thing as x to the power of 4. So let's make those replacements as well. Now this means that if you expand this expression over here, 3x minus 2x squared all squared, you just get 9x squared minus 12x cubed plus 4x to the 4. And I hope that this also shows you the point of a formula as well. I want you to notice that we didn't have to draw out any boxes, we didn't have to add anything up. We just used this formula. And then we went from this step over here, right to this final answer over here. And we didn't really need to do too much work to do that. Now this is basically everything I wanted to say about perfect square expansions. But there is another formula that I want to show you, so let me get rid of this example, and then I'll show you that as well. So the next expansion I want to show you is called the difference of two squares. Now just like we did for the perfect squares, I'm going to start off with a really simple example. We'll solve it together, and then we'll work our way towards the general formula. So let me start with this example. 
So the reason we call this a difference of two squares is because we want to be able to subtract a square from another square. So in general, we could do this just the way we did before, but it turns out that there's a bit of a smarter way. I'm going to start by actually drawing both of these squares, and then we'll work towards figuring out what that smarter way is. So I've just gone ahead and color coded these two squares. Notice that the 35 squared is this outer square, and the 33 squared is this inner square over here. Now if we want to subtract them from each other, then we're trying to find the area between the two squares. In a sense you can think of this like we started with the outer square, and then we decided to take away the inner square, and then all you're left with is the space in between them. Now one perfectly fine way to do this is to figure out what 35 squared is, and figure out what 33 squared is, and then subtract them from each other. But if we look at this space over here, we can actually rearrange it into a simpler shape that's going to be much easier to find the area of. Now I hope you are paying attention. I copied this shape over here, and then I copied this shape over here and also rotated it. Since this length is 33, then this length is still 33. Since this length is 35, then this length must also be 35. And then this means that this total width over here is 33 plus 35, which is just the same thing as 68. And then after this, we can say that this width over here is 35, and this width over here is 33. The difference between them is just 2, so that means this height is 2. You can also see that this height is also 2, and despite the fact that my picture isn't very good, that means this whole thing has a height of 2. Now we get to a really cool and really important point here. Instead of evaluating 35 squared minus 33 squared, what we can do instead is we can go 33 plus 35 and then multiply that by 2, and 2 is the same thing as 35 minus 33. So 35 minus 33 is the same thing as 2, 35 plus 33 is the same thing as 68. So all we have to do is multiply 2 by 68. Now again, I don't really care what the value is, but we might as well find it. 2 times 60 is the same thing as 120, plus 2 times 8, which is 16. 120 plus 16 is 136. And then, just like that, we found the difference of these two squares over here. We didn't have to calculate them, all we had to do is multiply these two numbers, and we got to the final answer. And you better bet that these are going to be the exact same steps we repeat in the general case. So let me just write out the general case. So in this case, we want to subtract the b square from the a square. This outer square is the a square, and this inner square is the b square. The idea is if we subtract the b square from the a square, we'll only be left with this area between the two. Now just like we did in the example, we want to break the shape into two parts, and then we want to straighten them out into a single rectangle. Okay, now this width over here is the same thing as b, and then this width over here is the same thing as a, so we can mark them directly. This directly tells us that the whole width over here is just a plus b. And now we just want to find the height. Well, the height over here is just a, and then this height over here is just b. So that means from here to here, we just have a minus b. And that means this over here is also a minus b. Now since this shape over here is the exact same as the difference between these two squares, then we can immediately say that the area of this rectangle is the same as the difference between these two squares. The area of this rectangle is just going to be a plus b times a minus b. So the difference of two squares can be rewritten as a plus b times a minus b. Now I've just rewritten this in the opposite order because the order doesn't really matter when you're multiplying. The other thing I wrote over here is that we've just converted the area between these two shapes into a rectangle to find this right hand side over here. Now before we part, there's no point in just giving you a formula without showing you how to use it. So I'm just going to show you that you could use this formula to cut away all of these steps that we did over here. Okay, so this time I've asked you to expand 3x squared minus 4y all times 4y plus 3x squared. This is actually really similar to this form on the right, but it's not exactly right because these two are in the wrong order. But of course we can just swap them because it doesn't matter what order you add things, so let me do that first. 
Now, a perfectly good way to expand this is to use the rainbow or foil method. You could just multiply this by this, then this by this, and then this by this, and then this by this. And I urge you to try that and see what happens. You'll notice quite a few things cross out. But if you want to be a good mathematician, you have to be lazy. Notice that this over here can be your A, and this over here can be your B. And notice that you have A again, and you have B again. Now, instead of bothering to try to expand things, we know that this side is equivalent to this side. So we could just rewrite this as a squared minus b squared. So let's just do that straight away. Now again, we've applied the formula perfectly well, but we can simplify this a little bit further. So let's do that. 3 squared is 9, and then x squared all squared is just x to the power of 4. 4 squared is 16, and then y squared can just be written as y squared. And this just means that we can say that 3x squared minus 4y times 4y plus 3x squared is the exact same thing as 9x to the power of 4 minus 16y squared. Now, I'd just like to be a little honest here. I want you to realize that these formulas don't really save us a lot of work yet. But in the future, you're going to meet some formulas that can save you literally pages of work. So you really do want to get used to using formulas to cut down the amount of work you have to do. And with that, I think we've completed our example. Now I'd just like to summarize this lesson. In this lesson, we talked about two special bracket expansions. Very specifically, we talked about the perfect square expansion and the difference of two squares. We found that if you have a plus b all squared, you can rewrite this as a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. If you have a minus b all squared, you can write this as a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. In general, the idea is if you have a plus here, you're going to have a plus as the first sign. If you have a minus, the first sign is also going to be a minus, but the second sign is always a plus in these two expansions. We also found that if you have a squared minus b squared, you can rewrite this as a minus b times a plus b, and we got that just by rearranging this area over here into this rectangle. Now in the future, nothing really stops us from continuing. We don't have to stop at 2. We can look at perfect cube expansions, which are going to be a plus b to the power of 3, for example. And instead of looking at difference of two squares, we can look at a difference of two cubes. So for example, a cubed minus b cubed. But we're not going to look at that in this lesson. And then one last takeaway I want you to have from this lesson is that formulas are designed to save you time. That's really the whole reason we spend so much time looking at formulas. They're just shortcuts. Now, despite the fact that you've seen all of these formulas in action, I don't think that just watching me do it is enough. You should actually get a pen and paper out yourself and actually try these formulas yourself. You'll find that when you try them, you do run into a few snags, but I'm sure you'll be able to work through them if you just follow all the rules really carefully. So I think at that point, I'd like to end this lesson on the special bracket expansions. Thanks for watching another Trina video. If you want to say thanks, you've got to show your friends. Or maybe you should just visit us at trina.org, where you can track your progress and have access to questions and heaps of other awesome stuff. Or maybe you should just like and subscribe. That works too. But either way, I'll see you next time.